Hello, content creation made easy listener. I am so glad you're here today. I'm having, I'm in the middle of a conversation and I just started to hit record because the conversation is so good. I'm talking to Meg Casebolt today. Um, now, I met Meg at a live event years ago and I have been waiting to have her on the Content Creation Made Easy podcast because I was like, I need to write her a fancy, beautiful, zhuzhed up pitch. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. Like she's been on my, please, please be on my podcast list for a year, two, at least two years at this point. And uh, I think it was two weeks ago, I was just so fed up with myself and sh I got an email from her because I'm on her <laughs> list and Meg is an SEO expert. We're going to talk about, we're going to talk about that. And I got her email and I was like, screw it. I need to just ask her. So I sent her this email <laughs> and I basically said that. And here she is. Two weeks later, she made it happen. It's just kind of a miracle. So Meg, I'm really glad to be talking about SEO and I'm really specifically glad to be talking about it with you because I think in a 2023 world, if we're not talking about SEO and we're not focusing on SEO, we're swimming upstream and we're exhausting ourselves. And I know this is your zone of genius. So let me hear what you have to say. Can you tell us first a little bit about who you are and what your magic is? Yes, absolutely. But first I want to say like, if there's somebody that you're thinking about reaching out to and you give an impassioned, thoughtful, like it doesn't have to be a perfect pitch that's like, here's the 12 different things we can talk about with corresponding graphics and pull quotes and testimonials. Like, I don't want that's to read right. that. What I want to read is like, here's why I want to talk to yeah. you. Um, and that's what Jen did when she wrote back is she wrote back. She told me where we'd met, which was great. She told me, um, you know, here's why I specifically am, am singling you out as the person to talk about this. Here's why it matters to my audience. Um, and I think to a great extent, that's what our content should mm. be doing. Not, you know, in this case, it was a one-to-one -one email pitch. But when we talk about content and content that can continue to have value long term what you did in that pitch is actually quite relevant because we're talking about you know creating something for one person that they need at a specific moment and being clear about why yeah. they need it so <laughs> there's beautiful. my segment. I love it hi <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Meg Casebolt from Love at First Search. Um, I run an SEO agency. We've used that term already a couple times. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. It is about getting your website, your products, your services to show up in search engines like Google or YouTube or Pinterest, you know, Apple Podcasts or Pinterest or Amazon. Mm -hmm. Amazon SEO is a thing. Etsy SEO is a thing. Anywhere that has a search bar, you can you know, put it into your website or your blog or your podcast or your marketplace and you can get it, your products and services to show up in those search results. That's all the search engine optimization. But it's is. scary. It's using the place, the, the <laughs> things that people are already looking for, you want to show up yeah. in those Why is it results. so scary for people? Because it sounds more complex than other marketing yeah. channels. Um, it, you know, a lot of times when people think about search engine optimization, they either think like, oh, I have to hire somebody to do this very fancy analysis for me and go into the back end of my website and make all these fancy changes, or I have to dot like dive headfirst into spreadsheets and spend the rest of my life yes. in spreadsheets. Um, and like, I love a spreadsheet. <laughs> I would spend all day in spreadsheets if I could, but that's not the only okay. way. <laughs> that is like a, I that's, that's a breath of fresh air. <laughs> You can make anything more know, complicated. That's so true. You know, you can you can take something as simple as Twitter strategy, where you only get a, a really constrained number of characters, and you can make Twitter yeah. really complicated if you yeah. want to, or you can keep it simple. Like, not everything has to be the most complicated, complex version of itself for it to be successful. Well, I think that that's where we really need to spend some time, because SEO is vital. Um, it's a noisy marketplace. People are looking for specific things. Our audience is so much more savvy than they used to be. They know exactly what they want. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is they have lots of options, right? So they're looking for the specifics. And how can we start using SEO to benefit us even if we've never done it before? Well, I think to an extent, the first step in understanding, we're, we'll just use Google okay. as our example here because it's the biggest search engine, right? Like 90% of traffic uh, or 95% of search traffic is wow. on Google. So we'll just use that as our, our um, primary search engine that we're talking about. You know, think about the fact that 77% of adults go to Google three or more mm -hmm. times a day. Take a look at your own behavior for a few minutes. What are you Googling? Yeah. 
What are the things that you're typing in? What types of problems are you looking to solve? People go to Google because they're missing information. Mm -hmm. And it's up to those search results to fill in the gaps. So when you're thinking about, you know, what's, what's your website, what's your value proposition on your website, what do you sell, however we want to say that, like, what's the information that's missing from people's knowledge about what you do? What's, what's the problem that you're solving on your website? I have a question for you. Start I there. have a question for you about that. A lot of my audience and, cl- and clients, when they come to me, they don't want to talk about people's problems. They don't know. They, because they're so resistant to talking about their people's problems, sometimes they don't know. So they, they, they struggle to be like, oh, I don't want to talk about pain points in my, um, in my marketing. But the, the subtext of what you're saying is if you don't know those pain points, you're really missing out because that's what people are Googling for. Yeah. People Google because something's wrong. Yeah, right. <laughs> or because like their eight year old is like, mom, how many teeth does a goblin <laughs> shark have? And you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know. <laughs> Although in our house, that's much more of a, a voice search. The name I'm not going okay. to say um, because she always pops up <laughs> right, at the most inopportune right, times right, right. when I talk about her. Right. Um, you know, there are times that people are just kind of searching for random knowledge, but I mean, think about like, I'm hungry and I don't want to make yeah. dinner. What am I going to go search for? Mm, I want some place that has really good Thai food in a 10 mile radius, yeah. right? Like sometimes searches, they don't have to be complicated, They but like the pain is, I'm yes. hungry. Yes, yes. There are things that are happening in your ideal client's lives. And there's a reason right now that they are searching for a solution. Um, So yes, I understand, especially those of us that are um, compassionate and empathetic people. We don't want to feel like we are like pressing on bruises and making people uncomfortable with our copy. You know, a lot of copywriting uses that um, pain agitation solution mm-hmm. formula where you're actually being encouraged to like push the bruise yeah. and be like, doesn't it suck <laughs> to be you? Um, but in my experience as a consumer, I want to be acknowledged. Yep. I want somebody to say, hey, you're hungry. And there's like really good pod CEO at this place up the street. So why don't you order from there? Like, it doesn't have to be, you've never eaten this before in your life. You know, like you, it doesn't have to be exaggerating. It doesn't have inflammatory. to be manipulating yeah. the pain. It doesn't have to be inflammatory. Yeah. It doesn't have to be predatory. Yes, I love those words. It right. It, it can just be an acknowledgement, an empathetic acknowledgement of the fact that people are looking for something. I call it marketing, mirror marketing. Basically, you're holding up a mirror so they can see themselves because sometimes that's all they know. Sometimes people don't even know there's a solution out there. If you hold up the marketing mirror to them, they can be like, right, I'm hungry and I, I want to try new, some new food today or whatever. But it's, it's not, uh, you, if you don't, this is where we start for SEO. Mm-hmm. And so you have to get comfortable mm-hmm. with that. Jen, I'm actually in the process right now of writing Ooh. a book. I have, I do not have a um, release date yet, but I'll share it with you when it's ready. And it's going to be called Search Empathy. Oh, I love that. So it's a search engine. Thank you. Um, I absolutely love You know, that. the more I tell people about it, the more I have to actually sit down and write it. Um, <laughs> but instead of search engine optimization, it's search empathy because so our goal as the business owner, as the person who is trying to be found, is to f- put ourselves in the shoes of the people who need what right. we want. And to recognize what is happening in their lives. If you're, I mean, like, let's take like a a pretty non-emotional example. If you're looking for a web designer, it's like, well, what is that person going through right now? Are they starting their business from Mm. scratch and they're nervous because they don't know if they should choose WordPress or Squarespace and they don't know if they should do it themselves or hire somebody and they don't know what the, uh, you know, the best practices are for the homepage design. And there are all these things that they don't know. Or is it somebody who wants to redesign their website? If so, what's the reason they're redesigning it right now? Is it because it's not converting? Mm-hmm. Is it because they changed their business? Is it because they, you know, just broke up with their business partner and they're separating? Is it because they're rebranding for some reason? Like there are so many moments and concerns and knowledge gaps that people are actively searching for. And if our businesses aren't showing up in those search results, 
someone else's way. Yeah, right, right, right. Because there, there's somebody else who's using SEO. So then if we can get on board yeah. with how important this is and know that it needs to be used across our, I think this is a, a misunderstanding that people have. <clears throat> SEO is not just for blogs and websites. I heard you say at the beginning of our conversation, like everything has an algorithm that is searchable. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's like, so Google, Google may be the yeah. largest search engine on the planet. The second largest is yep. YouTube. YouTube is owned by Google. People who are looking for a tutorial. I mean, like I go to YouTube all the time because I'm like, ah, I forgot how to start my snowblower. <laughs> Every year I forget how to start my snowblower and I have to go to YouTube and look up. And you and I look yeah, up yeah. things. Yours. Like this is an important <laughs> thing to know. We get a lot. Of, well, not this year, but normally like we get a lot of snow and every year I'm like, oh, which one's the start button and how do I do the choke? And like, I have to watch the YouTube video every year. And every year I go in and I figure out what the model is and I type in like whatever the brand it is, right. snowblower start. And I watch it every year, right? Because I'm in the moment of standing in my driveway with my gloves on and being really mad that it's not yes. working. There's my empathy. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you, search engine optimization, for making it easy for me. So then what do people, once they're mm -hmm. on board, uh, wh where do they start? I've heard of keywords, I think the best but like, place... where do we start? <laughs> my favorite place to start is like, go to the source, go to the well, go to Google and type in what is the term that you think people would search for if they wanted mm -hmm. you? And then before you hit enter, look at that autocomplete. Yes. So if you're a copywriter, mm -hmm. it's like you just write in copywriter and you might see the autocomplete might go copywriter near me or like copywriter salary or copywriter job description or copywriter rates, right? Or copywriter what is. There are so much information just right there about what are the types of questions mm -hmm. that people have about the term that you're using. And sometimes what that autocomplete tells you is, whoa, that's not actually the term that I'm I want so to write you for. said that. Yes. Sometimes it's like, how do I get a job as a copywriter? Not like, how do I hire mm -hmm. one? The next place to look once you actually click through is scroll down a little bit. Every search engine result page is a little different, but most of them have a section called people also ask. Mm, mm -hmm. The people also ask section is, <laughs> the, the, you know, what, what other questions often show up in this case. Those can give you really good ideas of like, if somebody's asking about that term that I used as what's called like a seed keyword, what are the other things that often come up for them? Is this like kind of other ways that people use to describe the same thing or other words for it, like amusement park and um, uh, you know, like, like other words for what amusement park would be. Is it, is it just different? Is it like synonyms or is it like similar words? That section on the page is called related okay. search terms. That's all the way down okay. at the bottom. The people also ask would be more like um, if you were to do amusement parks, it would be like, what's the biggest amusement park? What's the tallest roller coaster? How, what was the oldest mm -hmm. roller coaster? Um, what, how many roller coasters are made of wood versus metal? Like it, it will sort of give you those short, what are called snippets okay. of information in the people also mm -hmm. ask section. Um, and then the cool thing is if you go into like a people also ask about roller coaster history, it will ask more questions and load it up to the bottom about roller coaster history. So you can, I mean, to an extent, when Google added this feature onto the search engine results page, it decreased the amount of traffic going to mm -hmm. those pages because they didn't have to click through. Right, um, right. But when people go into the people also ask section and get those questions, they know where to go deeper because it's linked in there. It shows you as an authority there. Mm. Um, so I'm not going to talk about click through yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, look, look at those types of related questions and ways that people are are digging deeper on these topics um when i as uh, you know even as somebody who specializes in search when i go to google i'm often that's the place where i'm getting my answers is the people also ask because i realize that there are questions i didn't know i had about that topic until i saw the people yes also ask. i love this the thing that i think is interesting about what you're saying is we see Google so much. I think we become desensitized to what's on there. It's like the landscape of that page. We kind of gloss over the things that are there. And I love that we can dive deeper into all of these pieces and parts, but I, I certainly haven't realized how much is just on a Google search page that I could particularly use as a content creator. And it's just like a Google page has just 
it's like um it's like that picture on your wall that you see all the time that you don't notice anymore and i love this piece of gold that you're giving us like there's so much there it's not even like we necessarily have to pay for a search engine you know software like a lot of what we can do is right there on google is what i'm hearing you say totally and like even in the tabs within google not just the straight you know here's the web search results yeah. tab but if you go into google image search usually depending on your keyword some of them do and some of them don't but usually along the top there's little bubbles sort of like pinterest has too where it's like it gives that's you right. filters that's right and so if i'm gonna use an example of a product because sometimes it's a little yeah. bit easier if you go google like gold mm -hmm. necklace then you might see those little um, image bubbles say like gold and topaz or 14 karat gold or rose gold or gold pendant necklace. And having that information can help you realize like, oh, people aren't just looking for gold necklaces. They're looking for gold dangle pendant 14 karat necklace, right? And when you get that information, that can give you a much stronger idea of how much detail yes you can put into your website copy, your product pages, your blog posts. Like it can give you an idea of much tighter ideas of what potential things people might mm -hmm. want. You're giving me, I think I'm jumping ahead here, but you're giving me ideas about how you can repurpose. So say you wrote blogs about gold jewelry for, and they, or you wrote uh, blogs about gold, rose gold jewelry. And you could also write maybe a similar blog about, uh, 20, 24 karat gold jewelry. Like you can take mm -hmm. my, my thing is like, you can probably repurpose the bones of what you created by thinking about how to make it specific for whatever the search engine is showing you and how to optimize it for those keywords. So it's not like you constantly have to create all new content, but like if you had the bones of something and you made it specific for rose gold and then you had the bones of something and you tweaked it for 24 karat gold, you're getting a lot more mileage and your audience mm -hmm. is going to be much more interested because they found you by that specific search. Does that make sense? 100%. Yeah, you can definitely like use the framework yeah. of content that you've already created and then optimize to a specific keyword or a specific intention. Yeah. I don't even like to think of individual keywords anymore. That's sort of like an outdated oh, really? practice of like, you know, Yoast SEO is like, here, you have to use this keyword in these 10 places or you don't get a green yeah. light. And I just think that that's a little too formulaic, a little too like the robot mm. says you do this, but it sounds awkward as hell when you <laughs> write it. Um, I like to think instead about what's, what's the goal? What's the intention of whomever this, mm. you know, if it let's, you know, 14 karat gold versus gold, 14 karat, it's the same right, idea. Right, right. It's the order's different, right. but, but it's going to find it. It's the, <laughs> it's going to be, people are looking for the same right. thing. So if I say gold, 14 karat or 14 karat gold, like who, who cares what order it goes in if the, the thing that somebody is looking for is the same? And I think sometimes we can get a little caught up in like this sort of um like Lord of the Rings, one ring to rule them all <laughs> situation where it's like, well, what is the right keyword for this page, yeah. right? And what we know from, I mean, I love Google Search Console as a tool because it will tell you every single keyword that you rank for, whether or not people are clicking Amazing. through. If you show up in search results, in the top 100 search results, it will tell you exactly what those people are typing. But one of the things that you can very clearly see if you go look at your own keywords for your website is that you can have one page of your website that ranks for thousands mm. of different phrases. So it's not like you have to choose the keyword okay. and then write a different page okay. of your site you know one page for gold 14 karat and one for 14 karat gold no it's the same okay. thing so this is sounding like it make it easy i was gonna say yourself. this is sounding like it's a lot easier than it has been made out to be a lot less complicated yes yeah yeah so once you like do some of the research and you figure out what some keywords are right for you um what are the next steps i'm hearing you talk about yoast which is a plug-in for wordpress right is that correct yeah, I think I don't think that's necessarily the next step, though. I think the goal, the, the next step that I would do, well, first you do the research and you go, what are the types of things people okay. need? And then take those types of ideas of what people might need and map them to specific pages of okay. your website. You don't have to get every single keyword that you could possibly rank for shoved into your homepage copy and then shoved into your about page copy and then shoved. <laughs> you know, your homepage... 
you know, tell the story of your business. Mm -hmm. And there will be keywords that show up. My, my homepage is like, my, one of my keywords is SEO mm -hmm. agency or SEO for women, right? Like it can be a little bit generic there. And then I have very specific blog posts and videos that answer super yes. specific yes. questions that are like, should I do a podcast transcript for SEO? That's not going to show up on my homepage because it's way sure. too specific. But I have a blog post that I've sort of shoved, not shoved, I've mapped all of those podcast transcript keywords and gone, here's what I'm going to talk about in this blog I post. think there's a relief in hearing from you that your search engine optimization doesn't have to do the heavy lift on one piece of content, but all of your content working together, um, like synergistically, does the heavy lift yeah. SEO-wise. And I'm even going to make it less painful okay. than that, which is not every page of your website has to show up in search That's results. That's true. People are going to be like jumping from limb to limb, right? Right. If you can get people to, the goal of search engine optimization is to get people yeah. there. And then it's your website's job to keep them there, to tell them how to work right. with you. You only need to have them find you one mm. time. So every page of your, of your website can potentially be the on-ramp to people learning about you and getting to know you. Um, but n not every page of your website has to bring in the exact even you know if you have 10 pages of your website they're not all going to bring in exactly 10 percent probably one of them will bring in 80 percent mm -hmm. if you haven't done search engine optimization it's probably your home page because that has the highest domain authority mm -hmm. definitely not going to nerd out about <laughs> domain authority but um 80 percent of your traffic is probably going to 20 percent of your pages because that's how that's the, the way it works. works um that's just i mean that's that's the pareto principle in in seo terms um but you know you don't need to optimize every single page. You need to have a couple pages that are very simple on ramps for the questions you know people are mm -hmm. asking. And then it's up to your website to be like, oh, you know, my example I gave a minute ago, should I write a transcript for my podcast? Then I have them linked to a whole blog post about podcast SEO. And then I have them linked to here's how you can hire me to help yes. you with your podcast SEO, right? Like I don't need them to look at every page of my website. I need them to find the one on ramp yeah that then guides them to learn how they can work with me. They can download the podcast SEO checklist that's specific to that particular, mm -hmm. you know, silo of my website. Those people don't care about YouTube. Yes. So I'm not going to show my YouTube content. This is so uh, relieving. I Like, that's just the word I keep coming back to because I feel like SEO can be very overwhelming. Um, also, like, it's confusing sometimes what the keywords should be. And I've, I've taken... I've taken some trainings on SEO. I actually bought your course. Highly recommend Meg's online course if you have, or if you are looking for somebody to teach you this stuff step by step. In an, in a way, like you can just tell from her, she's relaxed about it, and she's not like militant. That's what I think I love about your approach is that there's nothing militant about it. And I have definitely taken some SEO trainings where it's been like. It's this and it's this and it's this and nothing, nothing ever operates that way in my life. So I'm so glad we're having this conversation <laughs> because I think you're make, you're probably making my listeners feel like, oh, this isn't, this isn't as time sucking and confusing and overwhelming as it's, and scary as it's been made out to be. Yeah. You can definitely tell that I have ADHD <laughs> when I start to teach people because I'm like, what's the way that it's going to get done? Do right, that way. Right. 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 <laughs> like just cut through all the bullshit. I want to speak a little bit about you're really committed to not making socials the center of your life. And I know that you've been on and off socials. I know you have your own podcast. Um, tell me about like the freedom that comes from moving into SEO and leaning on it and moving away from socials. Oh my gosh. Where do I start? <laughs> so I, <laughs> I um, accidentally left social media for an entire summer several years ago. Um, when I had, you know, my, my father was sick with cancer and I was like, I do not have either the like time or the mental bandwidth or like the energetic, you, you know, like it takes a lot of work to show up big on social. And my, my heart was not thinking like, Oh, what can I do on Instagram today? Yeah. Right. Like I was not in a place where I could do that. And so I took the summer off because I was with him and, um, I didn't mean to. I just couldn't yes. do it. I just couldn't mm -hmm. do it for mental health reasons. And at the end of the summer, I looked at my, you know, my sales. I looked at my intakes and I was like, well, 
things are moving along. Didn't really make that big of a difference. <laughs> That's incredible. And when you know your marketing metrics, you know, I'd set up my analytics and I knew where my leads were coming from and that made a big difference for me. I did end up going back because I missed yeah. it. Yeah. I remember when you said that in an I, email that, a, that you, it was a, but mm-hmm. it was a choice, not a have to. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that social media does have a place for people who want to use it in that it can be a really great place to keep in touch mm-hmm. with people, to stay top mm-hmm. of mind, to share recent updates. Like if that's something that you want to do, if that's a choice that you want to make, then by all means, right. go ahead. But I think that as a, a digital entrepreneur community, um, because social media is technically monetarily free. And because there is already an audience hanging out there, we feel like if we aren't there, then we are letting ourselves down or we are not engaging with our audience the way that we should without recognizing the fact that like, just because you're not paying for it doesn't mean that there isn't a cost. Exactly. Oh my God, yes, yes. You pay with your time and your energy. for me that first summer, right, it was the energetic drainage of needing to show up regularly. And even if I was batching and blah, 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 you know, like then I would still have to sit down every Monday and do my batching. And guess what? It's gone by the next Monday. It is gone. Yeah, sure. People can scroll through my old posts, but nobody does that. I know. I know. I, I, I go. So if you have the choice of like, you know, I'm going to invest in um, something that depreciates over time that I have to constantly be investing in, or I'm going to invest like a, I don't, I'm trying to think of a, a metaphor for right now. I know compound interest works for our <laughs> appreciating and value option. And I'm trying right now off the top it's of my head like, to be like, what's a depreciating? You know what it's like when you have um, an old car investment. that has a lot of miles on yes. it and you like, oh, I don't, I don't want to, um, I don't want to buy a new car because I like having, not having a car payment, but every month I'm paying two to $300 to my guy to fix something on this car. It's, it can feel like that. It totally <laughs> can, as opposed to like. I'm going to take the the money and do the upfront costs of getting a new car, but I'm also not needing to like sit on the side of the road and wait for AAA to come right. pick me up all the right, time. Right, right, right. I love this. <laughs> this is such a great conversation. I want to encourage people if they haven't heard of you before to go listen to your podcast because you talk so much about this this topic, but also about, you know, I think your podcast is called The Social Slowdown, right? Correct. If you are looking to do more of this, please go follow Meg. She is the expert on this, and I love it. Um, her stuff is so good. Meg, how else can people get into your orbit besides listening to The Social Slowdown? Sure. So I, I want to really quickly clarify that like, I'm not going to tell you to stop being on social media in the same way that I'm not <laughs> going to tell you exactly how you should set up your website. And I'm not – like, I am not a person who is like, this is the That's way why to I love do it. things. That's why I love your stuff. Um, because I think any time that somebody says this is the only framework that you can follow to success, um, I question that person's ability to innovate. Mm, so, so good. In everything that I do, I'm like, let's explore what works for you. Let's look at your marketing. Let's look at your metrics. Let's look at your lifestyle. Let's look at your goals. And then let's make a determination of what the best use of your time, your money, your energy, your resources are. Um, So that's something that we're exploring on the Social Slowdown podcast. If you want to come listen to that, it's not just about social media. It's that's really just my on ramp to say like, what is your digital marketing doing for you? And how are you investing your time and your resources? Um, If you want to think about investing your time and your resources into taking the content that you're learning about from Jen and making it something that can continue to be found on search engines, then come over and uh, get my SEO starter kit at loveatfirstsearch.com. Um, and that's the really great place to go to my email list and we'll tell you all about you know how to get started with your search engine optimization. I love all of Meg's stuff. If you can't tell, I'm like a huge fan of her stuff. Um, and I just want to say thank you for coming on and easing all of our pain around SEO and hopefully <laughs> encouraging that listener who's like, I'm so tired of the churn. I, I'm putting good stuff out there. I want to make it work better for me. Meg has really realistic strategies mm-hmm. to make it work better for you. And that's not my expertise. So I'm really glad to have you on talking about your expertise. It was absolutely my pleasure. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, again. Meg. I'll see you next week, listener. Thank you so much for choosing to listen to this particular podcast because there's a lot of podcasts out there. And if you would go give a rating and some feedback, I would be so grateful because I'm really trying to help more people find how to make content creation easier in 2023. Talk to you soon. See you next week. Bye.